Welcome to my board game quick start guide for Istanbul. Istanbul is a competitive game about rival groups of merchants seeking wealth and influence in the bazaar of Istanbul. Here are the important components. Place tiles, wheelbarrows, rules overviews, merchants with assistants, family members, good indicators, lira coins, bonus cards, four types of mosque tiles, wheelbarrow extensions, two types of demand tiles, the governor, the smuggler, mail indicators, rubies, and dice. To set up, lay out the place tiles in a 4x4 grid. If this is your first game, you should lay them out sequentially according to the numbers on each tile. If it's not your first game, you can use one of the alternate layouts described in the manual, or even arrange the tiles randomly. Place the stack of demand tiles with the lighter background on the small market, and the stack of demand tiles with the darker background on the large market. Both stacks are randomized. Separate the different mosque tiles and stack them in descending order. Place these on the great mosque and small mosque tiles. Place a stack of wheelbarrow extensions on the Wainwright tile. There should be enough for each player to complete their wheelbarrow. Place one ruby per player in the game in the bottom corner of the Wainwright and both mosque tiles. For example, in a four player game, I'd place four rubies on each tile. Place rubies in the squares on the Gemstone Dealer and Sultan's Palace tiles, depending on the number of players in the game. For example, in a four player game, I'd place them starting at the space marked 4 5 or 4 plus. Place the mail indicators on the top row of the post office tile. The bonus cards are shuffled and placed face down to the side. Roll the dice to determine the starting locations of the governor and the smuggler. For example, if you rolled an 11 for the governor, you'd place that token on tile number 11, which is the small market. If you rolled a 6 for the smuggler, you'd place the smuggler on the caravansary. It is possible for them to both end up at the same place. Each player is given a wheelbarrow tile with good indicators. The good indicators start on the empty crate icon for each good on the wheelbarrow. Each player chooses a color and puts their merchant piece on top of a stack of four assistants on the fountain tile. There should be one assistant piece left over. Each player also places their family member token on the police station tile. Each player is dealt a face down bonus card. The player who is going first gets the first player marker and two lira. The second player gets three lira. If you have a third player, they get four lira. The fourth player would get five lira, and the fifth player would get six lira. Now you're ready to begin. In Istanbul, you win the game by collecting rubies. The end of the game is triggered when any player has collected five rubies, or six in a two player game. On your turn, pick up your merchant token, along with any assistance currently stacked underneath it, and move either one or two spaces. You can only move left, right, up, or down not diagonally, and you can't move back to the space you just left. On the new tile, if you wish to perform that tile's action, you will either drop off an assistant or pick one up that you left on a previous turn. When you've done this, your turn is over and the player to your left takes their turn, and so on. For example, if you started on the fountain tile, you could move two spaces to the post office. If you wanted to perform the post office action, you would leave behind one assistant. That is everything you could do on that turn. On your next turn, you could move to the fabric warehouse and drop off an assistant to take an action there. On your third turn, you could return to the post office and pick up the assistant that you'd previously left behind to perform the action. If you currently have no assistants along with your merchant, you can still move, but you can't take any actions unless you're picking somebody up. When moving around the board, you will sometimes encounter other players. If you want to use a location that currently has another player's merchant, you must pay that player two lira in order to do so. If you can't pay or don't want to pay, you can't use the location until the other player leaves. You also have a hand of bonus cards. You should start the game with one, but can get more over the course of the game. 
You can play any number of bonus cards in your turn, but some of them only work when you're at a specific location. For example, this bonus card would allow you to sell any combination of goods at the small market, ignoring the current demand tile, but only if you use it when you're at the small market. When you play a bonus card, place it face up on the Caravansary. You can find a description of all of the different effects the cards can have on your player aid. Now I'll describe the actions you can take on each tile. When you take the Wainwright action, pay 7 lira to the bank to take a card extension to place in your cart. You can only take one at a time, but when you've taken your third and final extension, you also get a ruby from this tile. When you take an action on the fabric, spice, or fruit warehouses, immediately fill your cart with that good. At the beginning of the game, you can only carry two of each good, but that amount can be increased by visiting the Wainwright. When you take the post office action, receive the goods shown on the four uncovered spaces, and then move the first cube from the top row down to the bottom row. For example, if you go to the post office at the beginning of the game, it looks like this. If you take the action, you'll get one spice good, two lira, and one fruit good. The first cube then moves, so the next player to use the post office would get one fabric good, two lira, and a fruit good. When all of the cubes are on the bottom row, the next activation will cause them all to move back to the top row, like they were at the beginning of the game. When you take the caravansary action, Take two bonus cards into your hand and discard one bonus card face up to the caravansary tile. You can draw from the stack of face up cards or from the deck. If you already had cards in your hand, the card you discard doesn't have to be one of the ones that you drew. When you go to the fountain, you can call any or all of your assistants back to your stack. You can perform this action even if you don't have any assistants with you, and you don't have to pay the other merchants that are already there to do it. When you visit the black market, you can gain one fabric, one spice, or one fruit good of your choice. Then roll the dice for a chance to get some luxury goods. If you roll a 7 or an 8, you get one blue good. 9 or 10 gets you two blue goods. And 11 or 12 gets you three blue goods. When you visit the tea house, say a number between 3 and 12, and then roll the dice. If you roll a number greater than or equal to the number that you said, you get that many lira. If you roll less than the number that you said, you get 2 lira. When you visit the small or large market, you can sell some of the goods depicted on the demand tile. For example, if you visit the small market and have these goods in your cart, you can sell 2 yellow fruit goods and 1 fabric good to get 9 lira. After you do this, move the demand tiles to the bottom of the stack. When you visit the police station, you can free your family member, who will then travel to any space on the board, perform that action for you, and stay there. For example, if you go to the police station, you could immediately send your family member to the Wainwright on the other side of the board to take that action for you. If there's another merchant at the Wainwright, you don't have to pay them to use it. Your family member won't return to the police station until they are caught by one of the other players. I'll describe that in the next section. When you visit the Sultan's Palace, pay the visible goods in exchange for a ruby. For example, if you visit the Sultan's Palace at the beginning of the game, you can spend one of each type of good to take one ruby. Each time you take a ruby, it makes the next ruby a little more expensive. The next time this tile is visited, the cost of a ruby is one of each good, plus one additional good of your choice. When you visit the Gemstone Dealer, you can pay the largest visible amount to buy a ruby. For example, if you visit the gemstone dealer at the beginning of the game, you'll have to pay 12 lira to the bank to get a ruby. The next visit will cost 13 lira, and so on. When you visit one of the mosques, you can buy one of the upgrade tiles that you don't already have. Each upgrade only costs one good, but you must have all of the goods shown on the tile. For example, if you're the first player to visit the small mosque, you'll need to have two red fabric goods in your cart to be able to buy the red tile. It'll only cost you one good to buy it. If another player has already bought the red tile, you'll need to have three red fabric goods in your cart to be able to buy this tile, but it would still only cost one good. This means that you'll have to upgrade your cart before buying this tile, unless you're the first player to get there. These tiles give you special abilities for the rest of the game. If you have the red tile, 
you can affect the die rolls that you make at the tea house and the black market. Once per turn, after rolling, you can choose to turn one of the dice into a four or to re-roll both dice. If you have the green tile, whenever you use one of the warehouses, you can also choose to pay two lira to the bank to gain one additional good of any type. This is a good way to get blue luxury goods. If you have the blue tile, you immediately get the assistant which you set aside at the beginning of the game and add it to your stack. If you have the yellow tile, once per turn, you can pay two lira to the bank to return one of your assistants to your stack from anywhere on the board. When you've bought both tiles from a specific mosque, you also get one of the rubies from that mosque tile. If you take an action on the location containing the governor, you may draw a bonus card. If you do, you must either pay two lira to the bank or discard a bonus card from your hand. After interacting with the governor, roll two dice to determine the governor's new location. If you take an action on the location containing the smuggler, you may gain one good of your choice. But if you do, you must either pay two lira to the bank or pay one good from your cart. After interacting with the smuggler, roll two dice to determine the smuggler's new location. When any player collects their fifth ruby, the current round is also the final round. Each player between the current player and the one who started the game gets one more turn, so that each player gets the same number of turns. Then it's time for the final scoring. If only one player has all five rubies, that player is the winner. If more than one player achieved their goal in the final round, use the series of tiebreakers from the manual to decide the winner. This has been a board game quick start guide for Istanbul. Refer to your manual for additional information and clarification, and don't forget that the most important rule is to have fun.